<laughs> is it time for recess yet? I'm so glad you found time to join us here on the Child Care Director's Chair, where Erica Sacoccio shares her best practices that she's refined through her passion of directing child care centers over the last 23 years. From parenting interaction, systems to save you time, money, and stress, to profitability. She shares it all from the Child Care Director's Chair. Hey guys, Erica Sakoshio here with the Child Care Director's Chair podcast. And we have part two of an interview with Evangela Child, author, coach, uh, child care business owner, advocate for communities. So, welcome back to the show. Hi. We are going to talk today a little bit about legacy. So, for those of you who haven't seen the first episode, I would hop on over, check that out first. Towards the end of our conversation, we started to talk about legacy. So I'd love to um, expand on that. So let's talk about that. What is what is legacy? What does that mean? For me, legacy is how you will be remembered when you're no longer here to remind people who you are. That's a pretty that's a pretty good description. Um, I think to when 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 you think about legacy i think it's also what you want to leave as that imprint on those that have had not only the ones that have met you but people who haven't met you right what what impacts that second or third or fourth person removed from people who you know right because there are there are people who could have made a lasting impression on your life that you've never even met so i think it's not only the people that we meet but the people that have had some type of influence or change in their life due to something we've done or said or our work. So um, talk to me a little bit about your your journey on, on what you're hoping to do in terms of leaving a legacy with what you're sharing now with your book. Well, with my book, my hope is that childcare business leaders take the time to reconnect with who they are and how they can truly impact the community that they serve. Forgive me. Um, it's so often that we think about, you know, the curriculum and we think about um, how cute our facilities are and we think about, you know, enrollment and we think about the day-to-day -day things, but we don't often sit and think of, what happens outside of the four walls of our building and for me i feel like that is so vital to be interconnected within the community so that you know so that your children have an extended network of support can you yeah can you share some examples of um how you do that in your program yeah in our program i mean we were connected to um the schools, we had a relationship with local business owners. Um, we did uh, giveaways uh, at, there was this organization called Communities and Schools. And so they were really connected with how, how our, how the community connected to the children in the, in the school. So we, uh, the children didn't even have to be enrolled in our program. If they were located in the, the neighborhood in which the children that we serve, then we were able to serve them in other capacities. So, you know, even tutoring or showing up for different parent workshops for the parents in the community, because, you know, all of these parents and adults touch the children that you serve. Yeah. So if somebody is maybe a new child care director and isn't sure how to get started, what would you recommend? How, how, how do they start to make these connections? Well, I would say figure out what problem it is that you want to solve in the world first. Think about what, what your purpose is. Why are you starting this child care facility for real? You know what I mean? If you don't have a reason, sit with yourself and figure it out and come up with one. And because you can always serve a higher purpose than yourself. You know what I mean? If you have started it, if you started a child care center just for the money, you got tricked. But <laughs> so just sit Figure out your real purpose. If you truly love children, what is it about children that you want to help them with? And then connect to those organizations in the community that also service those same children in some capacity. 
So what we did was we wanted to provide food for our children. A lot of our, in my community, you know, we have a very high percentage of children that are below the poverty line. Their families are below the poverty line. So what we would do is their basic needs, we would connect to those organizations that already service them. So the organizations like the food banks, um, we connected to um, programs that gave clothes, shelter, programs that we connected to a women's shelter for battered women. You know, we even gave, created a scholarship program and, I mean, helped increase our enrollment, but those parents got a scholarship. And we also had that relationship with that organization. So we provided parenting classes and things like that to the women that came to that facility. So we just pretty much aligned ourselves with the organizations that thought like us you know what i mean so yeah we'll search going out into the communities going to the different um community events that have vendors going out letting people introducing yourself getting to know these people going to your local chamber and going to those meetings and meeting people and letting them know what it is that you were purpose in the world to do and how they can and how you can service them a lot of times people go to network meetings and they're like me 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 no, go and see how you can serve. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I think too, what, one of the ways that you can really build your team is also, as you said, when you're getting out there, like how great is it to have like your whole team go and, you know, like you said, the food bank and go and help serve the food, not just collect the food, but serve the food, meet the faces, meet the people. And that's a great way to, to for your team to bond and you know, really become cohesive and not, maybe not even just your team, your families too, right? Inviting them to, hey, this is where we're going to go. We're supporting this. You want to come as well. You you know, maybe they're going to go plant flowers at the, at the women's shelter or right? there's so many, yeah, so many, so many ways. To make teddy bears and take them to the local children's cancer facility. You can, you can do so much. You yeah. Elderly people come and do crocheting or something with the kids. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to connect to the community. You just have to want to in order to sit down and think about how to execute it. And you can. Mm. Let me ask you, and this might seem like a random question. I'm just kind of disinterested, really. How far is your home from your child care center? Oh, okay, so I'm in the country. So, <laughs> so everything is like so close. So it may be 15, maybe 20 minutes. Okay. I knew that was going to be the answer. That's why I asked it. <laughs> my, my, two of my two of my centers are literally and maybe a mile from my house, oh, wow. and and one might be I don't know maybe a mile and a half. Um, but I feel like if you live in the community where your center is, you have a pretty good pulse on your community. So you don't have to really work really hard to figure it out. So that's why I asked that. Yes. People complain about things all the time, and they would talk to me because they felt comfortable. Yeah. I mean, and that that well, you know, water cooler talk, as they say. You yeah. Find out, okay, the, my parents are. This is happening with my parents. You know, we did whole credit repair workshops with my parents. Wow, that's good. Yeah. They bought homes. They got their first credit cards. You know, but we were that type of facility. You know what I mean? Because that's what mm -hmm. we, that's what we wanted to do. Now, not every facility has parents that are impoverished let's be clear you know not everybody yeah. is going through that but i guarantee you your parents have their own set of issues uh -huh. okay and when you're looking at what you know that's what entrepreneurs do that you look to solve a problem yeah so if you're looking to add an extra stream of income listen to what your parents are complaining about yeah yeah if all of your parents are overworked and tired by friday and they don't feel like cooking or cleaning Mm -hmm. maybe you provide a meal for them on Friday. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's an extra way to, you know, increase your income. And then if you're going to provide meals, maybe you could look into door dashing, some uh -huh. of those meals, you know what I mean? It's a, everything is an opportunity, but it's also a service. You know what I mean? Parents need that. They need the support. If you have a lot of single moms, you know what I mean? Like that, she, she need to rest. Yeah. <laughs> So Saturday, maybe a maybe a, a Saturday, a Saturday care once once a month, or you know. And again, like you said, something that you can charge for brings you in some additional revenue. But I know a lot of moms that would love 
a Saturday service so they can, even even if you're not doing anything fun, which I hope that you do, but even if you're going grocery shopping, going grocery shopping without three kids is is much more is is much more productive. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think we also we partnered with a car detail. Okay, we, you know we had a lot of moms, so they you know most of the time. I'm not saying you can't clean your car as a woman, but I'm saying you know most of the time, me and other ones that take out the trash, they wash the car, they change the tires, they do those kind of things. So you know to give the women a break, you know our parents were mostly mostly moms. We had now we did have a lot of um, dads that came through, but they they helped like for car washes and things like that, the guys would chip in and they would wash the cars for all the moms and they were so appreciative, you know, and they didn't mind, you know, paying yeah. their money to get that done. You know what I mean? And we, mm -hmm. when we partnered with the detail shop, I think his basic fee was like 55 and he would give us like a $15 kickback for that. And we literally had to do nothing except let them use the facility. Wow. Let them use the facility and depending on how often you did it it could make you a little bit of extra money yeah so what what do you think the key ingredient is for leadership in uh, early childhood education caring about your people that's the key yeah. ingredient if you if you care you'll find a way yeah you know what i mean you'll find a way it doesn't it doesn't even matter what the problem is if you care you'll figure it out so what do you what do you think because I am very community based, but we know not all centers are, which is, as you said, like one of the things that makes you special and unique and really stand out. Why do you, because I, I think people generally are good people. Why do you think so many programs are stuck around this that don't, aren't able to kind of get to that next level when it comes to building out a legacy? I think that a lot of the time, you know, we do believe heavily in what we're doing in the community. But not everyone is getting that same advice. Not everyone is getting, you know, uh, there are a lot of business leaders that are teaching us to look at the children, you know, as numbers, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't get that humanistic legacy oriented element in your business. You know, you create yeah. a franchise model to sell it, not to connect to it, not to, and so you lose that connection to the people that you serve mm -hmm. and forget you know what I mean? That you are in a service oriented business. You are there to care, child care, <laughs> you are there to care for the people that you are, that are there. Yeah, they're paying us. Granted, they are paying us, but we're here to serve them. You know what I mean? That's, that's yeah. How many locations do you have? Do you have one? Well, we had two and we just recently closed. Closed. Cut. Yeah, and we have a nonprofit, so we're working. Um, we have a nonprofit. Our nonprofit is I Am Legacy PTCA, and okay. so it's the organization that was kind of birthed from all of the services mm -hmm. that we were providing our community. And so now we have a full blown diaper pantry, get wipes. We do all the all the things for moms and children that are still in diapers. Okay. Do you guys have like a Head Start program near where you are? Because over here we have a Head Start, which kind of is like an all, yes, yeah. kind of an all-encompassing program. Yeah. yeah, you do too. We have okay. Head Start. We have, we have pre-K. I get a lot of places call it EPK, mm -hmm. you know, Universal Pre-K. But yeah, Georgia's had pre-K for a while. Okay. Okay. And how has that impacted what you guys do or not at all? Honestly, it's been here for so long. When I decided I wanted my own child care center, it was already a part of the play. You know? Okay. It was like. Yeah. What you got to do because it's here. It's been here for us. For yeah, us. yeah, sure, sure. I mean, it, 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 it's here for sure. It's it's not going anywhere. And I, I would beg to say within five to six years, it's going to be out everywhere, I would imagine. Yeah, we did. We took that, the fact that they exist, you mm -hmm. know, we didn't take that, even though we could look at it as dipping into our um, market, well, mm -hmm. you technically it does because we service a, a low income parents, right? Mm -hmm. But also, we just cranked up our after school program. Gotcha. You know, and I do, <laughs> I do, I do. Yeah. So, in your experience, what would you say your program? What would be the biggest challenges that you guys have faced at your program itself? Well, I say initially, it was learning how to weed out people that did not connect to our purpose. 
You know what I mean? Like I do. Our, yeah. our interview process has became very much so extensive. Mm-hmm. Just, just to weed out the people that did not connect. Because not everybody is a good fit. And I think that a lot of the time, child care centers, we get into the habit of just hiring because we need the person, even if they're qualified on paper, mm-hmm. connected. So we wanted we did, we wanted you to be qualified. Yeah, that's a plus. But we yeah. want you to be connected to our purpose so that even if you weren't qualified, you can you can become qualified. I can train you. Mm-hmm. Get you trained. But I can't I can't necessarily cultivate your heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Inspire. That I can do. I can inspire yeah. you to tell you stories. I can share with you things that we've done and how we've impacted this parent and that child. But if you don't care, yeah. Can do and the first thing out of everybody's mouth if you've ever interviewed is oh I love children yeah (laughs) yeah and then the next the next thing that I say after that is I love horses it doesn't make me a jockey (laughs) it does it it takes more than love yes it take it it takes a lot it takes a lot yeah um and I think also we have definitely changed our not only our hiring system but our onboarding system and I fully believe in what you're saying. So at one point I had six childcare centers. We closed some, uh, I sold some, we closed some because after three for me, and everybody's going to have their own different magic number. For me, three was the number because it was important for me to know my children, my families, my staff, and all of our programs are on the same road. So I could, there's two right across from each other. So I could literally be at one within a minute. But it was, it was important because like, like you, it, it's, it's a calling of a care of care. And one person can only care for so many people in a way that's genuine. You know what I mean? So I think that as you get bigger and as you said, like either a franchise or a corporate or, you know, you have locations through several different states. And again, I'm not knocking it. That's a, that's a business model, but we're maybe more of a heart model. If that makes sense, right? Well, so you know, um that heart got a it's a business now. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Like you said, the, the lights. If it's working at center one and center two and center three, you can do thirty three and it'll still do the same thing. Because as long as you have those the right people tapped into the purpose. You know what I mean? I I I don't know. For better better description, I couldn't think of anybody but but Jesus. He had his disciples. He didn't go everywhere with them. You know? Yeah. And if you're going to have your child care leaders, they need to be, I'm talking about those child care leaders need to be all in on the plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have to be radical about what yeah. it is that you do. You don't even need to be in a room. People that think they own the business, like, go ahead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Those people that are sold out, you have them everywhere and they need to be your leader. And they don't even have to be necessarily your child care director. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's it, you need the child care that the, the people on the higher up, they need to be sold out on what it is that you do. But every facility needs that child care cheerleader, that person that comes to every event, you know, mm-hmm. get her unpaid, that'll, mm-hmm. that'll go to the, the children's things outside of the daycare facility or child care facility, whatever you want to call it. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you need those people that are sold out on your families. And so, yeah your purpose sold out on your plan so that you have the reputation of what it is that you aim to do in the world. Now, yeah. You know, if your whole thing is literacy, then who all are you teaching to read? Who are you giving books to? You know what uh-huh. I mean? Where, where are you going to read? Are you, do you have a partnership or relationship with your li- local library? Why, right, yeah. If your children are transitioning into kindergarten. Do you volunteer in their classroom to make sure that they have that transitional period? Are you uh-huh. Things are you truly connected? Are you down for your purpose and plan? That's yeah, happen. yeah, for sure. We have our our kindergarten teacher, um, Miss Wade, who is at the local school. She actually comes to our center and talks with the parents about what to expect in in kindergarten, and she, you know, she shares kind of what what it looks like and how it's different than pre K and what the parents can expect, what the kids can expect. But the you know, there's a little bit of a a smooth transition rather than. I'm leaving all these people that I know and love to now go off to all these new folks. So yeah, um, I, I totally get that. So, you know, you, you talk a lot about excellence and legacy. Um, where do people who 
feel a little lost. Where do they go? Where do they find it? And 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 how do they implement it? That's that's a, that's a loaded question, but I just I just curious, you know, like you said, finding these people who are gonna be radical and run your your center the way that you want it to that aligns with your vision. Like, where do people start? Maybe where do they find those people? How do they make those people? Tell us more. You're gonna have to go out into your community. You're going to have to, first of all, stop copying and pasting your job listing. You know what I mean? You tell, to talk about what it is that you're passionate about. Talk about what it is that your team is doing. Go out into the community and tell people who you are. Tell people you're looking for people that are in alignment with what it is that you care about. What are your core values? What is your mission? What is your vision? What are mm-hmm. you seeking to do for real? Yeah. You know I mean, what are you seeking to do? Because... You ain't going to get nobody radical about anything if you ain't radical <laughs> yourself. You can't just co- copy and paste? <laughs> you can't, well, people do it all the time. They just Google, you know. No, you're right. For early child care teachers. Yeah. You paste it and drop it in Indeed and hope Indeed works. And it's just not. Yeah. You're going to get a you're right. to come through your door. You're right. If you're looking to make excellence and have excellence. That's yeah, that isn't that isn't gonna be the way. <laughs> and not everybody. I'm telling you, I hired somebody. I was listen, I was in the drive through at a hot dog stand and I had i I'm so serious. I had such a good experience. It blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, this lady is can you come work for me, please? Mm-hmm. She was so she just was she just her customer service, her bedside manner in a freaking hot dog stand. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm like, you have to have your eyes, your ears open to everybody. Yeah. People just, they just have that thing. Yes. You, know you, hear it. you do know when you hear it. Absolutely. How much they pay you? I know. I, 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 I had a girl who came in the other day for an interview and she had a portfolio with her. And I just about fell out of my chair. I was like, oh my God, someone Someone who gets it, like, I can't remember the last time somebody came with, like, a portfolio and, um, you know, had all of her, her certifications in there, samples of her work, her resume, pictures of her engaged with children. Like, she was ready. She was ready. And I was like, wow, it was so refreshing. Like, you knew this was somebody who was serious about what she was doing. She was serious about teaching and also proud of the work that she was doing, too, right? Because anybody coming be like, here's my degree. But like you said, that that doesn't always mean anything, right? But it was it was the it was the cultivation of all of it. Of I've been doing this for seven years, and here is you know some of the work with my kids, and here you know so you could you could see it and you could hear it in her voice. She was so excited, and you know what she said to me, and it's funny like what you said about the copy and paste. She said, you know, I've been on a couple of interviews where I bought this portfolio, and several of the people didn't even look at it, like they didn't even they didn't even care. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, I was ready to throw a parade. I was like, oh, I, I can't even remember last time somebody walked in on an interview with a portfolio. It was, it was great. So yeah, I think, you know, it's finding those, those sparks in, in, in a sea of minutia. <laughs> I, it, yeah. I said this was crazy. I've, it's always been weird. I hardly ever ask questions relevant to the classroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Cause you're trying to see who they are as a person. Yeah. I intentionally make my interviews long because if I see you watching your watch, I tell you, cancel your day. You know what I mean? Because I know that a key component in child care and what makes a really great child care teacher is patience. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I would try to patience the entire interview. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Why are you asking them that weird question to see if they'll respond to me in yeah. a way that is either condescending, they don't take me serious. Especially if I'm going to be your boss, are you going to insult me in this interview because I'm yeah. asking you a question you don't understand? You know, yeah. Though, because when you throw people off their game, then they have more of an opportunity to show you who they really are. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't afford to put the wrong person in the class. You know, what mm-hmm. I, I do. Yeah, like, we're not going to mess up her culture. You're not going to hurt my children. You're not going to because. And when I say hurt, I don't want the person that when the child takes them off guard. They yell at them. They yeah. Them. They do those things because it's more than just you're burned out. You yeah. So, mm-hmm. But we yeah. had those things. We had those preventative measures in place. You know, let us know if you need to take a break. Ask for a cup of water. We got you. <laughs> you know those cold words like, hey, she needs to get out of there. Tap out. Yep. 
Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think that comes to being in tune with what's what's going on in your four walls, which is why I think I, I mean, I know you can get some really great people who can run your programs. And so I, I, I know that that's possible, but I don't know. Maybe it's just my my need of greed of I want to be the one who makes sure that it's on point. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's that mama bear in me. I don't know, yeah, but. It's the mama bear in me. I can't lie. I can't lie. Yes, I can. Don't censor them. You don't have to do that every day. Yeah, I know. I do that a lot. Let me tell you, girl. When I, I hate that office stuff sometimes. I'm like, uh, I'm going to go play with the kids, you know? But you know what's funny is that when your teen members also like to get out of their classroom, I'd be like, uh, tag, I'll switch. You can go do the filing. I'm going to come I'm gonna come read with the kids. Oh, I'm going to come. I'm yeah. Gonna yeah. And they love it. And they, the teachers love it. Yeah, they love it. They're cross-trained. They get to try something different because, again, it gets a little hard to be inspired if you're doing literally the same thing every day. It's a little hamster wheelish, right? So just giving them the opportunity to mix it up. And that's why we love playing with the kids so much, too, because it's it's a change of pace and you get some some loving back. I mean, what other job do you walk in and there's like 20 people who like attack your <laughs> attract your, you know, attack your knees but they almost take you out, right? They're, they're so happy to see you always. There's no other job in the world like that. Where everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I saw you 10 minutes ago, but yay, I'm back. <laughs> so yeah, so talk about legacy. I know we got a little bit off there, but talk about legacy. I mean, that when you when you walk in a room and everybody is inspired because you came in, not because you left, but because you came in, you know that you are making an impact in those people's lives, right? When you have staff that are like, hey, are you coming to our building today? Instead of, uh-oh, beyond, you know, beyond God, the boss is coming. It's the opposite at our place. They're like, yo, you haven't been here in days. I need to see you. I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, but, you know, they, they they really, really enjoy seeing you. That's how you know you're doing it right. They do it. Like, can I be sick, though? What? I, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, my kids say that, too. They're like, Mom, you're home sick. Why are they still calling you? I said, because they need me. <laughs> They're competent, but they need me. They love my voice. Sometimes they just call to see if I need chicken soup. All it is, they just want yeah. to be around you. Like, they literally do not need Yes. You. And that's how you know you have a good team. Yeah. They literally do not need you to operate it at, you know, exceedingly mm -hmm. and well, but they just want your presence around. Yeah. They think you're a good person, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't take that for granted, but you still have to refill your yeah, yes, for sure, for sure. So uh, tell folks a little bit about your new book. Okay, so the name of the book is The ABCs of Child Care Impact Mastery, The Child Care Visionary's Guide to More Profits and Even More Impact. Okay, and the goal with that book is to have child care business leaders to connect to their purpose, whatever that may be in the world, and to utilize or leverage child care as a tool in which they reach the world so i think that all child care centers around the world have a unique opportunity i feel like literally child care will save the world i i believe that with every fiber in my being i believe that child care is the one business that is uniquely positioned to reach the entire world you know we have I mean, it's, it's we're more interconnected than Google. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When those parents come to us and they sit there with us in those parent interviews and they're asking questions about their children, those children matter to those parents, you know what I mean, more than mm -hmm. anything in this world. And mm -hmm. if you can have a conversation with them on how to improve, how they cultivate their parenthood and how to create a better life, for themselves and for their children, that's beyond measure because that's a true ripple. That's a generational ripple effect. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't know. I think you know. I've I've mended relationships with grandparents and moms. No, baby daddies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just teaching them how to cohere that creates so much peace for that child. You know what I yeah. mean? And gives that child a better opportunity to develop as a well-rounded human being. Yeah. I think that we kind of limit, you know, our purpose and we kind of, I mean, the, I mean, the world has some stigmas around child care, but we have the most important job on the planet. We do. 
Yeah. That's the job you get paid for because, hey, I'm a mom of six. So. <laughs> That's what you're getting all your practice. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? That's right. We're an extended network of support for people. For sure. You know, yeah. I mean, we're in, and even though they're paying us to do it, you know what I mean? The majority, if I itemized everything I did for my parents it'll blow out the water, you know what I mean? But we have, but that's what I feel like I'm ordained in purpose to do. So if you're going to connect to families, if you're going to rear children, you're literally cultivating the future minds of the world, how these children think, how they are emotionally developed. You know what I mean? The uh, yep. how, That a child feels secure. Do you know that children brain cells develop at different levels based on how safe they feel as a child? You know what I mean? And we have, and I mean a baby baby. Yeah. You know, this matters for real. Like by the time they get to elementary school, they are who they are. Yep. You know what I mean? So if we- I do. Don't do, I know you do, uh-huh. <laughs> but if we don't do our job exceedingly and abundantly, the people that they become in the world, you know, the future presidents. Yeah. The well, people, yes, yes, yes. They say somebody hugged that baby as a baby. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Sure. I do. I do. So I love, I love um, what you're doing. I love the work that you are doing continue to spread that message because a lot of people need to hear it. I'm glad I could do a, a little teeny pot of spreading what your, um, you know, what your mission is for sure. For those of you who want to hear more from our friend here, Miss Child, please check out her book. It's on Amazon. We're going to leave in the link below uh, the first chapter so you can check it out. You're going to love it. She is wonderful. And uh, we're so thankful for having you on the show. Thank you for everybody for tuning in. And remember, it's the small details, like the ones we're talking about today, the small details that make the biggest impact, not only in the success of your child care center, but the success of the children, parents, and staff members that you touch every single day with your heart. So keep doing the good work. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye. Well, all the cute little kiddos have been picked up and it's time to go home. And that'll do it for another episode of the Child Care Director's Chair. Please leave a review so Erica knows the information is helping you to manage and improve your child care centers. Remember to subscribe to get the latest episode from Erica's Child Care Director's Chair. (laughs)